today in the show we have the A16Z token launch guide, the MicroStrategy Orange, Bob, a Layer 2 uniting Bitcoin Ethereum, and so much more. I'm your host, Mauricio Magaldi, and this is Block Drops, your weekly digest on blockchain for business. These news are not a form of endorsement, sponsorship, or encouragement for consumption, and are meant for educational purposes only. We are going through what the market calls a bull market. And in the bull market, we see prices of assets going up. There's a lot of optimism. But what we also see is a increase in the numbers of the projects that are being launched. And in crypto, most projects will issue a corresponding token or tokens. And A16Z Crypto, which is probably the most important venture capital fund in this industry, uh, is uh, championed by founder and managing partner Chris Dixon, get a lot of questions about how the hell do I launch a token? So A16Z, being who they are, put together not one, not two, not three, but four different guides across the board for projects that are trying to launch a token and what they need to take into account. So the first one is, and I, I, I read this, you know, by and large, um, and and uh, I'm not going to read through, but I'll, I'll point out what these things talk about and, and, and why they're important. So the first one is called how, how to Navigate Token Launch Risks. So it's a risk-led uh, approach. So they go through legal, commercial, and operational risks, and they propose three strategies to deal with these risks. The first is to decentralize. So the more you can decentralize a project, the less these risks are going to appear. Uh, they offer an angle of progressive decentralization until you reach a sufficient decentralization. Um, so this is the first approach. Second approach is to exclude. Exclude mostly jurisdictions where tokens are going to see be seen as a problem. Obviously, the U.S. is the prominent one, so you might want to steer clear of it. And the third one is kind of in between, which is restrict, minimize the exposure you're going to have for that particular uh, jurisdiction. Then the next one is getting ready to launch a token. What you need to know, they cover product market fit. Um, they propose an actionable plan for decentralization, how to model the economy of the token so it's compelling to users and to investors, um, how to set up a robust organizational structure, and how to get ready to launch the token. Then the third guide is called the Operational Guidelines for Token Launches from Creation to Custody. And here they approach how to build and establish relationship with custodians, how to run security audits, uh, the importance of distribution of the tokens and allocation, the enforcement of lockups for early investors so they don't run away with the token and dump everything on the market, and enabling staking and governance through the use of the token as well. And the fourth one is five rules for token launches. And these are the five rules. Never publicly sell tokens in the US for fundraising purposes. That's one. Rule two, make decentralization the North Star. Rule three, communication is everything. Govern yourself accordingly. Rule four, be careful about secondary market listings and liquidity. And five, always make token lockups apply for at least one year from token launch to preserve the value. So pretty interesting in coming from what would be arguably the fund that has launched the most tokens in the recent past. So they're, they're not kidding. They have one of my favorite lawyers. Yes, I have favorite lawyers. Uh, Miles Jennings involved in all of this. Uh, we've uh, reported on things he wrote in the past. And it's pretty interesting to see that now they have this kind of compendium library for uh, specific launching on the token. So if you're operating a project in the bull market and you're going to launch a token for whatever reason, I'm not going to discuss reasons here. There are many reasons for projects to not launch a token. But if you arrived at the conclusion that you need a token in your 
project, be it a platform, a protocol, a blockchain, a nice cream parlor, I don't care. Make sure that you go through this material and obviously do your own research. This is not financial or legal advice, but it's great material put together from people who are doing this on a regular basis. So this is free education, probably the best type of education. So get on, go do this, take a reading, comment as well, see what you think, let me know what you think, and we'll make a better industry with it. On drop number two, we're going to cover a new announcement from the, what is probably the most maximalist of the Bitcoin companies, MicroStrategy. MicroStrategy is, uh, is the company of the one and only Michael Saylor, who was in Brazil recently, uh, for a series of events. Um, and they had this, uh, event called the MicroStrategy World. Bitcoin for Corporations 2024, which is the company event for the market. And among other things, the one thing that caught my attention is that they announced something called MicroStrategy Orange. MicroStrategy is an enterprise technology services SaaS company, mostly focused on enterprise. And they haven't added blockchain of any kind into the product suite until now. So this is, this is important. And the first set of applications or the platform that they're launching deals with one thing that's very important for the enterprise, which is identity. So Microsoft Orange is, according to the announcement, an enterprise platform that allows you to build decentralized identity applications using the Bitcoin blockchain as the basis. So at the heart of it, there's cloud hosted services that will allow you to issue identifiers for the organizations, the users, maybe even devices. And at the bottom of it, it records things on the blockchain and the blockchain that they're using is the Bitcoin blockchain. So very a lot of a lot of things to unpack here right so according to the um executive vice president of microstrategy uh i th i think it's cesari raxel this is um this is the first for them and they're bringing what they call and i quote the orange apps will be prepacked and will be point solutions to address specific digital identity challenges End quote. So they're focusing specifically on just on the start of their journey with blockchain incorporated into the stack. They'll start with one of the most fundamental primitives for enterprise technology, which is identity, which is counterintuitive if you think about pseudonymity on the Bitcoin blockchain. So according to him, and I'll quote, we see a huge opportunity, and this is just the beginning. Custodial or non-custodial, the obvious thing is every Bitcoin wallet out there should incorporate the capability of creating a Bitcoin-based digital identity. Many messaging platforms suffer from the same challenges that email does. When you get a text message, how do you know the person who sent you the text message? We would want to include an orange check for these different messaging platforms. End quote. So... The announcement also lists a few things that are, I think are interesting. So they're going to bring in ecosystem for issuance of verifiable credentials. There are many standards in the industry and, and across industries. So they're going to bring ecosystem to issue verifiable credentials using MicroStrategy Orange. They're going to support Bitcoin applications, but they list enterprise applications, messaging platforms, social media networks, e-commerce applications and fintech applications as targets to deploy MicroStrategy Orange in the context of uh, identity management, digital identity um, management. So uh, Raxo continues, and I quote, the other opportunity we see we want to pursue is integrating digital identity based on Bitcoin with its bigger verifiable credentials ecosystem, which opens up another large number of very interesting use cases 
where I can now credential my identity anchored to Bitcoin with a university degree, with a course certification issued by a, a hyperscaler, with your medical record and present and present those and have those verified all in a decentralized way, but with the ultimate identity living and being anchored to the Bitcoin blockchain, end quote. They'll need centralized authorities to issue those credentials, but the stack is going to run on Bitcoin. That is very interesting. So let's see how this evolves, because this is one of those technology primitives that can be very much abstracted and made it easy to use for developers as much as you know, Stripe made payments, this might make on-chain credentials, on-chain identity available for developers across the landscape. So in the third drop today, we're going to cover more Bitcoin, which is uh, very interesting. Bitcoin has been going through this uh, renaissance, or what some says, uh, say that is the uh, Bitcoin 2.0 era. Uh, because Bitcoin is booming with programmability, there are layer twos, there are new developments on the roadmap for Bitcoin Core, layer one. So it's very interesting to see uh, really this renaissance across uh, a variety of applications and use cases leveraging the Bitcoin blockchain. And this week I ran into this headline announcing Bob, not a person. The Build on Bitcoin project that is building a hybrid layer two. So it is hybrid because it it uses Ethereum rollups, but also uh, anchors liquidity and security on Bitcoin with bridges and and also with a uh, future use of Bitcoin's proof of work uh, and uh, rolling into Bitcoin as a zero knowledge rollup for security. This is all on the roadmap. So the roadmap says that right now they're launching with an optimistic Ethereum rollup, which is the type of uh, rollup that takes uh, seven days uh, to finality based on mathematical proofs and challenges. Next stage, they're going to bring proof of work security from the Bitcoin blockchain with an Ethereum rollup. Then they will have the optimistic Bitcoin rollup using BitVM. And the next phase, which is the end state of the security for the, for the network, is zero knowledge rollups in a Bitcoin whenever that becomes available from the layer one. Very interesting approach to both market and to uh, the technology, to the security. According to Bob's co founder, Alexei Zamiatin, uh, and I quote, we currently work with two leading Bitcoin bridges uh, while working on our bridge infrastructure in parallel. We built a one-click on-ramp from Bitcoin to Bob that abstracts bridge complexity and makes moving liquidity from Bitcoin to Bob as easy as moving from ETH to ETH layer 2 going live next week. End quote. Interesting. They're focusing on interoperability and user experience, which is very important for early stage adoption. They are focusing on the DeFi space right now. They launched with $300 million in TVL, meaning total value locked. Uh, and they have over 40 applications already running on chain, mostly on DeFi, but on other things, including wallets and uh, bridges as well. They continue, and I quote, Connecting to Ethereum follows a pragmatic rollout approach. Bitcoin rollups do not yet work, but the demand is high. Bitcoin users need access to stable coins and DeFi. Ethereum users want to use their Bitcoin and get access to ordinals, runes, and BRC20s, uh, end quote. BRC20s, if you don't recall, are the fungible tokens, programmable fungible tokens on Bitcoin that behave much like the ERC20 counterparts on Ethereum. So they are trying to uh, bring that into Bob. So they're blending the technologies that made layer twos possible on Ethereum with Bitcoin and drawing security from Bitcoin while drawing assets from both sides, which is very, very interesting approach. According to their uh, technical documents, the architecture comprises an SDK, the software development kit, the bridges, as they said, there's a Rust ZKEVM, 
that will be the integration for the Bitcoin Rust stack and the ZK rollups in a Bitcoin. Right now, they're using an EVM virtual machine core from Ethereum for smart contracts and wallets and infrastructure and tooling. And they have a rollup layer for Bitcoin security and bridging Ethereum native assets. I think this is incredible. I think this is very interesting. We're going to see a lot of things coming out of Bitcoin and hopefully we'll see, uh, as I said, UX coming in first because we do need better UX at the protocol level. And let's see what, get built, what gets built. It's very interesting to see all these layers uh, building up. But the more interesting things is what problems are they solving? So if Bob is solving for stable coins, DeFi, and bridging assets from side to side so people can actually use the assets that they accumulated, that's already uh, an indication of where they're going to head with the rest of the features on the chain. In a week packed full of news, here is more. Football club Manchester City is partnering with crypto exchange OKX to launch Unseen City Shirts, an NFT collection which is free and limited edition of the football club's jerseys. BlackRock is leading a $47 million round of investment on tokenization firm Securitize. The Tom Foundation team is teaming up with Hashkey to take crypto on ramping into Telegram, the messaging app. Blockchain Layer 1, Sui, is partnering with Google Cloud to take data-driven insights, AI-powered development tools, and zero-knowledge proofs to the hands of the chain's developers. There is a hackathon by the Lumix team with almost $20,000 in total rewards. Get signed up! Telefonica announced that they're partnering with Meta, Qualcomm, and 10 startups in a new push towards the metaverse. MoonPay, the on-ramping company, is now offering their users to buy crypto, sourcing the funding through the, pay, the PayPal wallet. Block, the parent company for uh, Square, released a manual called the Bitcoin Blueprint for Corporate Balance Sheets. Now you can take Bitcoin to your company with the help of Block. Tether, the, um, the issuers of the USDT stablecoin, dollar stablecoin, entered a partnership with Chainalysis for transaction surveillance in a bid to respond to the amounting regulatory pressure. online we're on instagram at block drops podcast on twitter at block drops pod or zero x mauricio we're on lens at block drops dot lens we have a newsletter on linkedin write to us at block drops podcast at gmail.com and you can listen to the block drops podcast at spotify icolab febrabun tech and all of the other major streaming platforms Shoutouts today to the people who share the links you will find in the episode notes. Anthony Day, Chris Dixon, Michael Williams, Rita Martins, Paul Brody, Lugi Tillier, Carlos Arena, Caio Barbosa, Eduardo Viegas, and Ivan Soto Wright. Shoutout also to the now 5,000 plus subscribers of our LinkedIn newsletter. If you're not there yet, do subscribe, the link is also in the show's description. Don't forget to leave the ratings on your favorite player. This is all for today. Stay rare, stay weird. LFG.